Want to speak real French from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at FrenchPod101.com. Most people who learn a foreign language learn it so that they can one day have real life conversations with native speakers. When you start out learning and crack open your first textbook or listen to your first podcast, having a real conversation can feel like a fantasy. When everything about a language feels new, it can be overwhelming. But this couldn't be further from the truth. While it does take a significant amount of time and effort to become fluent, having a conversation might not be as far off as you think. In this video, we'll look at three ways you can boost your conversational skills and start talking to native speakers. Number one, find native speakers and practice with them. It's unlikely you live near a big group of native speakers to practice with. If you happen to be in a major or international city, your chances may be better. Check and see if your city has a general language exchange. Chances are there could be a native speaker there who is also trying to learn another language. Practicing in person with a native speaker is probably the most interesting option for honing your speaking skills. But if you can't find anyone where you live, the next best option is to look online. Luckily for language learners, the past 10 years or so have seen an explosion in online language exchange sites. On these websites, you can search for someone who is a native speaker of your target language and is also learning your native language. The idea behind a language exchange is that you communicate with them via video or text chat, and half of the time, they help you practice your target language, and for the other half, you help them practice theirs. Practicing via an online language exchange is a highly effective way to practice your conversational skills. Number two, work on pronunciation. Pronunciation is often an overlooked skill when it comes to learning a foreign language. Most people think of a good foreign accent as a luxury rather than a necessity. But what most people don't talk about is how having a good accent boosts your listening and comprehension skills. If you can hear a sound from a foreign language and know how to make it yourself, then you're more likely to understand native speakers when they talk at normal speed, and you're also more likely to remember any new words or phrases you come across. Having a good accent means that the language no longer sounds foreign. Instead, it sounds familiar, maybe even natural. So how do you go about perfecting your accent? The best way is to break down the language into its individual sounds. Make note of any sounds that are the same or similar to your native language and of those that are different. Of the sounds that are different, spend your time practicing the ones that you find the hardest to say correctly. After you're comfortable with the individual sounds, you can start linking together words and phrases. This is where accent practice starts to get really fun and interesting. Get your hands on some native speaker audio from a TV show, song, or podcast. Play the audio back and listen closely a few times. Take note of how words blend together in speech. Then, do your best to imitate what you hear, trying to match the speaker's emphasis and intonation. Our language learning program's playback feature is perfect for this. Record yourself and compare it to the original recording. Rinse and repeat until you're comfortable with the audio selection, and then move on to something more difficult. This is how you can break through the accent barrier and really start to make the language your own. Number three, learn phrases, not just individual words. Learning grammar and individual words is great, but it's not the only approach you should take if you want to speak fluently. In addition to your regular grammar and vocabulary, try learning whole phrases, even if you aren't totally sure how they work grammatically. Learn phrases that are specific to your needs. It's a good idea to learn phrases that are grouped around a certain setting or subject, such as simple greetings or introductions, questions for getting to know someone, or traveling comfortably. You can even learn filler phrases, which you can use so that you have something to say when, well, you don't know what to say. Learning phrases like this will help you become conversational faster. You may not understand what you're saying literally, but as long as you know the general meaning behind the phrase and know when to use it, you'll be able to talk like a native. Eventually, your knowledge of grammar and vocabulary should catch up with the phrases you know. Learning a new language should feel like an adventure. There will be plateaus and periods in your learning where it feels like you're hitting a wall, but being able to speak with native speakers and have real conversations will help you combat language fatigue. After all, talking to someone face-to-face -face in a foreign language is one of the main reasons we start learning in the first place. And for even more ways to gain conversation skills, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel.
We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to speak real French from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at frenchpod101.com. Welcome back, watchers. Uh huh. Bye. So welcome back, watchers. This week we're going to talk about must know expressions for agreeing and disagreeing. Are you ready? C'est vrai. That's true. Yeah, this is just a simple answer for when something is true. C'est vrai can also be a question if um, you want to confirm that someone said something or you are really surprised. C'est vrai? Like, oh, really? Yeah, or we just say it casually. Ah, oh, c'est vrai. Or, ah, did you notice the sky was blue today? Oh, tu as remarqué que le ciel était bleu aujourd'hui? Ah, oh, c'est vrai. Oh, that's true. Uh -huh. <laughs> Je crois que oui. I guess so. Do you think the concert is going to be at 8 p.m. today? Yeah, I think so. Tu crois que le concert est à 8 heures ce soir? Ah, je crois que oui. So this is not a 100% sure answer, so you still have to check it. But you are 75 to 80% sure it's true. Absolument, absolutely. That's when you are 100% convinced it's true. Or right, or what you're saying. I think we should go with the blue color for the marketing campaign. Absolutely! Je crois que nous devrions choisir le bleu pour la campagne marketing. Absolument. And not the filthy yellow. It's also a really formal and polite manner to say yes. For example, if you're in a fancy hotel and you say, oh, is the bar on the first floor? And you say, absolument. Absolutely. Qu'en pensez-vous? What do you think? What do you think about this week's lesson? Leave a comment. Que pensez-vous de la leçon de cette semaine? Laissez-moi un commentaire. What do you think about the food here? Que pensez-vous de la nourriture ici? I think it's really good. Yeah, it's totally cool. Peut-être, maybe. Do you think you will be able to come tonight? Maybe. Est-ce que tu penses que tu pourras venir ce soir? Peut-être. That's 50-50 level of sureness. Je ne pense pas. I don't think so. Do you think you can finish this task before the day is over? I don't think so. Tu penses que tu pourras finir ce travail avant que la journée soit finie Je ne pense pas. Bien sûr, of course. Can I have fries with my chicken Of course. Est-ce que je peux avoir des frites avec mon poulet Bien sûr. Yes. Oh, mom, can I go out Maman, est-ce que je peux sortir Bien sûr, of course. Just be careful and call mommy when you arrive. J'allais le dire. I was just going to say that. Or sometimes we use... Uh, Tu l'as dit, which is, oh yeah, you, right, you said so. Uh -huh. Oh my God, have you seen Betty's new hair color? It's terrible. J'allais le dire. I was just about to say that. <coughs> Je crains d'être en désaccord. I'm afraid I disagree. That's racist, you twat. Je n'aime pas la musique pop. Je crains d'être en désaccord. I don't like pop music. I'm afraid I disagree. Hey, what kind of music do you like, guys? Leave a comment. Aucun doute là-dessus. No doubt about it. Here you are 120% sure. It's true. So use it when you are only really sure. This episode of Weekly Word is going to be awesome. No doubt about it. Cet épisode de French Weekly Words va être super bien. Aucun doute là-dessus. Il va signer le contrat. Aucun doute là-dessus. He is going to sign the contract. No doubt about it. So that's about it for this week. Don't forget to check the website frenchpod101.com for more French lessons. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Hi, watchers. Welcome back. And this way, we are going to talk about 10 words for connecting thoughts. I'm really bad at connecting thoughts, so maybe we can learn things together this time. Let's go. Ensuite, then. Ensuite, then. I took a shower, then went to work. J'ai pris une douche et ensuite je suis allé au travail. My morning routine, what? Cependant, however. Cependant, however. I like the blue version. However, pink also looks good. J'aime la version bleue. Cependant, le rose est aussi joli. Like when you're redecorating your house. De l'autre côté. On the other hand. De l'autre côté. On the other hand. It's sunny today, so we should go outside. On the other hand, it might rain later. 
Aujourd'hui, il fait soleil, nous devrions sortir. De l'autre côté, il va peut-être pleuvoir un peu plus tard. Plutôt, instead. Plutôt, instead. Let's go by boat instead. Allons-y plutôt en bateau. Like if you want to go to an island and you can choose between the plane and the boat. Let's go by boat, it's nicer. <laughs> Unless there is a storm and then you get caught in the boat and then you are super sick. Awesome! Oh look, Leah, we are going to die! Say bye to Bobby and Daddy! <laughs> What? Yeah, there is water in the boat and we are in the middle of nowhere. Oh, That was scary. That's why I don't like being on boats. De plus, moreover, besides. De plus, moreover, besides. I'm lost in the wood, moreover, my phone battery is dead. Je suis perdu dans la forêt. De plus, la batterie de mon téléphone est morte. Également, likewise. Également, likewise. I read this book and my sister did likewise. J'ai lu ce livre et ma sœur l'a lu également. Aussi, also. Aussi, also. We also have muffins. Nous avons aussi des muffins. Pendant ce temps, meanwhile. Pendant ce temps, meanwhile. J'étais en train de mettre la table et pendant ce temps, le chien a mangé tous les muffins. I was setting the table. Meanwhile, the dog had all the muffins. My doggy. Something tasty, I eat that. En réalité, in fact. En réalité, in fact. The dog didn't eat all the muffins. In fact, I ate them. Le chien n'a pas mangé tous les muffins. En réalité, c'était moi. And they were so good. Finalement. Finally. Finalement. Finally. Nous nous rencontrons finalement. Finally, we meet. Hugs. All my watchers. Snoozing. And. Connecting thoughts. So we learned 10 words for connecting thoughts today. Tell me in a long sentence by connecting your thoughts and using some of them. Mm, if you can connect your thoughts, because I cannot. <laughs> if you want to learn more in French, don't forget to check frenchpod101.com and we will see you next time. Bye. Hi everybody, Candice here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer your most common French questions. The question for this lesson is, how can I use French slang? There are a lot of words you hear in French that you almost never see written. In fact, there are many expressions that are unique to spoken French. Take quoi at the end of a sentence, for example. Quoi in spoken French doesn't just mean what. When used at the end of a sentence, it's a filler word that adds emphasis. If you're talking about something with your friend and she says, c'est normal quoi, she isn't asking a question. In English, it would sound something like, this is quite normal. She's emphasizing how average or usual the situation is. A very popular slang word among young people is genre. It can be translated to the filler word like in English. For example, c'était genre trop bien, would be, it was like, amazing. Another common word that's used differently in spoken slang is se casser, which means to go separate ways or to split up. Say you're at lunch with some friends and you have another appointment to go to. You might say, on se casse, to signal the end of the get together. The closest equivalent would be Let's get out of here. However, be careful when you use it, because it can come off as a little rude. On a similar note, casse-toi means get lost, which can be mean or playful, so be careful with this one too. Let's look at some words you'll usually only use in conversation. Un boulot is literally a job. Boulot comes from the French verb boulotter, which means to work with secrecy. Its nuance is more of what I do to get by, rather than what I do for a living, which would be le travail, un petit boulot 
of sometimes, just un boulot is a part-time or a job. Un bouquin is the casual word for a book. Bouquin comes from the Dutch book, which also means book and has a similar pronunciation. France has a strong academic culture and informal discussions over books happen often. So many people use bouquin in more casual settings instead of livre, which is the formal way to say book. The word buffet means to scarf down food, when you're really hungry and not paying attention to your manners. It's not an insult though. Everyone understands the need to buffet sometimes, especially after a long, hard day of work. However, because of France's vibrant culinary culture, buffet isn't a word you'll come across in polite circles. Oof is an interjection you'll hear often. It means you're relieved after you've done or gone through something crazy. You can use it as an adjective too, like c'est ouf when you're talking about a crazy situation. It most closely translates to that's sick or simply that's crazy. You can even describe a person as un ouf, which means someone who's lost his mind. Ouf actually comes from Verlan, which is a pattern of slang in French. We'll talk about that more in another lesson. Here are a couple more common slang words. Kiffer means to dig something or to like something. Dingue means crazy, either in a good way or a bad way. Another one is chiant, a vulgar slang word which means really annoying. How was it? Go ahead and try them out. At your own risk, of course. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. À bientôt, see you soon. Hi everybody, Candice here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I answer your most common French questions. The question for this lesson is, when do you use verb plus a or verb plus de for verbs that can use either? Depending on the context, some French verbs can use either a or de. The most common ones are probably penser, meaning to think. Parler, to talk, and jouer, to play. While each of these verbs can use both constructions, the nuances are different, and we will go over that in this lesson. Both penser à and penser de mean to think about, but penser à gives the impression of having something in mind. An example would be à quoi tu penses, which means what are you thinking about, or what do you have in mind? Penser de is usually for soliciting opinions. For example, qu'est-ce que tu penses de ce film? is, what do you think about this movie? For parler, to talk, parler à is used to express to whom you're talking. So, I'm talking to my aunt. Would be, je parle à ma tante. Parler de is for what you're talking about. If you said, je parle de ma tante, in English, it would be, I'm talking about my aunt. So, parler de is for topics and parler à is for people. The same rule applies to demander, meaning to ask, and promettre, to promise. Demander à is to ask someone something, and demander de is to ask someone to do something. Promettre à is to promise someone something, and promettre de is to promise to do something. For jouer, to play, it's very simple to understand. Jouer à is for sports, and jouer de is for musical instruments. So you would say, je joue du piano, I play piano. But je joue au tennis, I play tennis. Remember, a plus le makes o. Those are the major differences you'll come across. There are some verbs like continuer, to continue, and commencer, to start, that mean the same thing whether you use a or de. I hope that clears things up. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. A bientôt, see you soon. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. 
You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.